Good morning. Good morning. Close the door back there. <laughs> Good morning again. Good to see everybody this morning. It looks like we're down a few numbers. I don't know why. It's uh, it's a great day. It's Sunday morning. Um, most folks like to come to the house of the Lord to worship, sing, or at least have coffee or cookie or something. So uh, it's good to see everybody this morning. Okay, everybody's looking looking pretty good. Most folks are. We're kind of evenly balanced this morning. We do have a couple of visitors. Uh, Mr. Marston, I understand. I asked him who he was. He, he's going to fill out a visitor card. <laughs> good to see him. He knows I'm messing with him. Okay. Um, but it is good to see everybody this morning. Our Bible reading and prayer this morning is going to be by Mr. Jimmy. Is he uh, somewhere? He's, he's not nervous. Just, he's going to take his time. I'll stand right beside beside him if he likes or behind him and uh, just come on up whenever you're ready right, right now will be a good time <laughs> five minutes ten minutes it doesn't matter mm. good, morning. Good, morning. Good, morning. good morning let's pray dear father thank you for allowing us to be able to come to church and uh, worship and learn about you In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's see. I'm going to read from uh, Proverbs 16, 9. The mind of man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Amen. And pretty much what I got out of it is we're not left alone in life. We can plan, but the Lord controls what, what happens. Amen. I'm just going to leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. you want to volunteer for next week? Oh, I better take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Select anyone. We do have a lot out sick this morning. That just means that you all need to sing louder <laughs> to make up for those that aren't here. So we are in the green book this morning. If you will turn to page 220, He Lives. We'll sing this one first. If you will stand on this song. I think everybody knows this one. Y'all sing loud. <clears throat> everybody please stand for the reading of God's word. John the Revelator was on the Isle of Patmos, and God took John up and showed him great and wonderful things that are going to happen. He showed him a lot of bad things that were going to happen, but he also showed him some great and wonderful things. And that's the title of today's message. What a day that will be. Amen. What a day that will be. Revelation 21, starting in verse 1. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Amen. Amen. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give of the foundation of water of life freely to him who thirst. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, there can be no better words than this. Now, Lord, I pray that you would stir our hearts 
and let us get a glimpse of you today. Let us see you high and lifted up, sitting on that throne. God, let our little feeble minds try to grasp about heaven today and about what you have prepared for us. Lord, help us today not to focus on the negative. Help us to focus on the positive. Because, Lord, if we leave here with a positive attitude, we will influence others to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Lord, let us not focus on our problems, but let us focus on our problem solver. Lord, let us not focus on our troubles, but let us focus on the one who carries us through our troubles. Lord, let us not focus on our sorrows, but let us realize that you are taking us through that valley side by side with you. Now, Lord, make me a clean vessel and let your people hear your words today. And, Lord, let the Spirit have free reign and bind Satan and his minions from this place. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Over the last few weeks, we've talked about a lot of things. We talked about the great white throne judgment, which is terrible. We talked about the rapture of the church, which I'm ready. Can I get an amen anywhere? Amen. We talked about the tribulation and the great tribulation. And I feel so sorry for those who are going to have to go through that. However, us as believers, we will not be here. Can I get an amen on that? But today I want to talk to about where we're going to be. We're going to be raptured out of here. Then they're going to go through that great tribulation. It's going to be seven years of hell on earth. And then Jesus is coming back. And there's going to be a thousand year millennial reign. I cannot imagine that. Cannot imagine it. But John the Revelator, God showed him something. And he said, I see the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. And people have said, why didn't John explain more of what he saw. Well, I want you to picture yourself as a child and God or your parents have taken you to like a three ring circus and you got a big ring here and a big ring here and a big ring here. And here you have trapeze artists and here you have elephants and here you have clowns and, and your little eyes are just going here too and there and you don't really know how to explain what you're seeing. That's exactly what happened to John. John was seeing heavenly things and trying to explain it with earthly mind. So that's why he told us what he told us. And God told him to write it down. Write it down so all will know. But see, we won't be here. We won't be here. We're already going to be in heaven with Jesus. And, and, and we're going to get to see that new city come down. And I don't know about you, but the older I get, the more I like to think about heaven. And I, and I think crazy things about heaven. I try to sit down and imagine how great it's going to be, but God says that nobody can imagine how great it's going to be. But I strain to try. And y'all know I had a good friend die two weeks ago. And then just this past week, I had a, another friend of mine who I went to school with. Uh, he passed away. And both of them were believers, and I found myself wanting to think more and more about where they are and what they've seen. My dear grandmother read a book on heaven. She had this book that she would read over and over and over again. She loved to read God's word about heaven. And, and she loved to think about, about what heaven would be like. The word heaven occurs over 500 times in the Bible. And it talks about three different types of heaven. The first heaven is our atmospheric heaven that we see, the blue sky and all of that. The second heaven is out what we call outer space where the planets are and all these uh, galaxies that are so far away that, Betty, we can't even imagine getting there. But God's already there. Do you know that? That's how big our God is. And then the third heaven is the divine heaven. It's where God lives. So why, do, why is it important that we think about heaven? Well, it's important that we think about heaven so we can be happy and so we can share with others what is waiting for us. You go, you go to Disneyland or Disney World or some of these places and you get so excited or you go on a cruise or you go to the mountains or whatever and you get so excited you come back, you won't tell everybody about it, amen? Well, listen, we hadn't been to heaven yet, but we ought to be excited about going and telling them what the brochure tells us about heaven. Can I get an amen? amen. This is the best brochure right here that we'll ever have about heaven. 
And it's been said that some Christians are so heavenly minded that they're not any earthly good. I don't know about that. I'm, I really believe more believers are so earthly minded that they're not any heavenly good. See, I think too many of us today have our mind on this earth and not on heaven. Y'all, this is not my home. Thank Amen. God for that. Amen. This is not my home. I'm just passing through. Colossians 3 says, set your mind on the things above, not the things that are here. Well, above, we're talking about birds. He's talking about the third heaven where God is. The Apostle John recognized this and he told believers to be mindful that this world is messed up. This world is flawed and, and it is incapable of providing the sac, sac, uh, satisfaction to believers. Listen to what it says, 1 John 2. Do not love the world. That's pretty plain. That's real plain. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, and listen to this, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, every sin that we commit comes under one of those three categories right there. And John says that we are not to love this world. It comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, and whosoever does the will of God lives forever. Ever. C.S. Lewis says this, Has the world been so kind to you that you should leave with regret? There are better things ahead than what we leave behind. Amen. The best is yet to come, y'all. Listen to what C.S. Lewis also said, and, and this is so profound. If I find myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most reasonable explanation is that I was made for another world. Amen. Now you think about that. We have all these desires. I want a new house. I want a new car. I want this. I want that. If I get it, I'd just be satisfied. If I could just get this wife or get this husband or get this job, or if I could just get this, I would be satisfied. Listen, y'all, nothing of this world satisfies. Amen. And a true believer has a desire in their heart that nothing can satisfy because I am not of this world. Amen. I have been made a new creation. Amen. Nothing is going to satisfy you here because it is all going to pass away. Amen. All going to pass away. So what about heaven? I want to give you five things about heaven real quick, so buckle up and hang on. First of all, liberals deny the existence of heaven, but I'm going to tell you right now, heaven is a real place. Amen. It is not a fable. Liberals say it's a state of mind, wishful thinking. But listen, it is a literal place. God talks more about heaven than you can imagine if you get into God's Word. He is giving us a glimpse. He is pulling the curtain back just a little to show us what heaven is going to be like. Even the foundations of heaven. Sherry and I have got a building project going on and the foundations, they just dug a hole and they throwed some concrete in it and smoothed it out and there it is. We'll cover it up and you'll never see it. Heaven is so great that the foundations are more beautiful than anything we have in this planet. You don't believe me? It, it, let me tell you what it says. It, it says it has 12 foundations and each one is garnished or covered with a different jewel. One of the jewels is, a, is, is one, I can't pronounce some of these names, but this one is Jasper, and it's going to be crystal clear. Can you imagine a foundation looking like that? Just one layer. The next one is sapphire. It's blue. Look at that. Now, you get this picture. This is the foundation of heaven, y'all. The next one is a greenish blue. I cannot pronounce that. Isn't that pretty? God buried that in the dirt here, and he's going to use it for a foundation up there. The next one is a deep green. It's an emerald. Look at that. Isn't that great? Number five is a sardonyx. It's white with brown specks. Look at that. The next one, number six, is blood red. Look, look at that. Look, look at what God made. He buried it in the dirt. The next one. Is yellow quartz. Look at that. All these bright colors are going to be different layers of the foundation of heaven. The next one is a green. Look at the different shades in that. 
The next one is a yellowish green. It's topaz. Look at that. Light catches it. It's just, man, it's just beautiful. The next one is apple green. Look at that one. Look, look at that. Look at that rock that God made. He formed that. Y'all know that every ounce of gold on this planet, God knows where it is because He put it there. Amen. The next one is blue. Look, look at that. Look at that pale blue. And the next one is purple, royal. So that's just the foundation, see? Think about the foundations of heaven is going to be worth more than this planet is right now. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Didn't say cabins. Didn't say apartments. Didn't say condos. Didn't say houses. It says mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, which we know he did, and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where he is, we can be right there with him. Amen. That's heaven, y'all. It is literal. It's tangible. John said, I saw with my own eyeballs. I didn't hear this. I didn't get word from it. Nobody wrote it down. I saw it with my own eyeballs. Heaven is as real as Center Star Alabama right now, but a whole lot prettier. Amen. We're going to have real bodies too. Now, I don't know how this is going to work, but we're going to have real bodies up there. But we're going to be able to walk through walls and go from one place to another. How do I know that? Because Jesus could. He had a resurrected body, but he ate. Y'all know that? How does that work? I don't know. I don't have to know. I just know I'm going to have it. And how many of you not would like to have a new body today? Come on now. Let's get real. Let's get real. And I heard a preacher saying this. I've been studying on this. He said, Jesus said, you'll be as I am. He was 33 years old. Wow. Wouldn't that be great? He also said we're going to be known as we're known, but that's on down in the message, okay? So listen, heaven is going to be great. We're going to have a glorified body, and it is going to be, hang on, something we have never experienced perfect. Amen. Number two, heaven is a remaining place. What does that mean? Well, <clears throat> we just read that everything here is going to pass away. Nothing on this physical earth is going to remain. Nothing. Now think about that. He even said there'll be no more sea. See, we like to have nice things and, and, and God gave them us to enjoy, but we don't need to get attached because they're not permanent. Amen. I see it every day. I go showing house. People live their whole lives there, 30, 40, 50 years, collected all this stuff. They die. They're gone. Their kids don't want it. Nothing's permanent here. It's all just stuff. In the end, all we're going to have is our spirit. That's it. That's it. That's all we're going to have. All we're going to have is in eternity is the stuff we send to heaven before us. What? You got to send stuff to heaven. I ain't even got the address. Oh, well, listen to what it says. Matthew 6. Lay up not for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. And for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. Whew. Let me look at your checkbook. I can tell you what you love. I mean, I'm sorry, but that, that's just the truth. Let me, let me talk to you for 20 minutes. I can tell you what you love. Think about it. Are you laying up treasures in heaven? How do you do it? You obey God. Amen. You obey God. You love Him above everything, and you love others as yourself. And if you do that, you are going to obey God, and you are going to be out doing His business just like Jesus did at age 12. One of the most precious things I think will happen in heaven, and I don't know if this is going to happen or not, but it's sure nice to think about. Somebody come up and say, man, thanks to your testimony. Thanks to you for praying for me. Thanks for you for inviting me to church. I'm in heaven today. That gives me cold chills. That may not happen, 
but it's sure nice to think about. It's sure nice to think about that I could have a positive influence instead of a negative influence. Amen. Too many of us, including myself, we get in the flesh and we have a negative influence. Heaven is a real place and heaven is a remaining place. It will never pass away, y'all. Never. Number three, heaven is a prepared place. A prepared place. I've done a lot of weddings in, since I've been a pastor. And let me tell you, weddings take a year to prepare, they say. You build a house today. You've got everything prepared and laid out. It takes you a year to build a house. And none of these things that we prepare here are perfect. But God has prepared a perfect place for us. Amen. It's called heaven. Jesus said he was going to prepare a mansion. Now think about it. God created everything in six days. He's been up there over 2,000 years preparing our mansion. Imagine what that's going to look like, y'all. Imagine how it's going to be. Just imagine, just think about how much time God has spent preparing heaven. R.G. Lee said this, Heaven is the most marvelous place that the wisdom of God could conceive and that the power of God could prepare. Now think about that. Heaven is so marvelous that God could not conceive nor, comp nor build anything better. Think about it. That, that gives me cold chills. That heaven is so great that it is, it is the pinnacle. It is the pinnacle of what God can do. And God can do anything, y'all. So this is how great heaven is going to be. Some of y'all don't look happy about this. Some of you look like, I don't know. You think about how pretty the butterflies are here, or the rose, or the stars, or the planets, or the red birds, or anything that we have here, the waterfalls. You think about all of that, how beautiful that is. God made that in six days. Think what heaven is going to be. And I believe that in heaven we are going to run around breathless. And when we see the Apostle John, we're going to say, man, you should have given us more words. And John's going to say there are no words to describe heaven. It's like describing love you cannot. Heaven is going to be such a place that we cannot imagine. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. My little feeble mind cannot, cannot imagine how great heaven is going to be. Think about it. Think about it. The best place, the best thing you can imagine times a hundred billion. Good gracious, heaven is a prepared place. And listen, it is prepared for us. It is prepared for us. Number four, heaven is going to be a place of relationship. The Bible says we will be known as we're known. And I'm not going to get into the things that people like to argue about. What about my family that don't make it? I don't know. I know this, God's going God's to make it perfect so you will not be in sorrow. But I know we're going to be known as we're known. You're going to know the disciples and the apostles. How do I know that? Well, when Jesus had, had the disciples up on the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses and Elijah appeared, who had been gone for thousands of years, and the disciples recognized them. He didn't have to introduce them. We're going to be known as we're known. Think about that. Think about that. And, and, and heaven is going to be such a place that even if the streets of gold were not gold, they were gravel, it'd still be a great place. If, if the walls were particle board and not jasper, it'd still be a great place. If the mud was knee deep and the weeds over our head, it's still going to be a great place. Why? Because not only are we going to be known as we're known, but it is a place of relationships and Jesus Christ is going to be there and that's all that matters. What if there were no pearly gates, no harps, no foundation of stone like that, no angels? It'd still be heaven.
because that's where Jesus is. People want to argue. People love to argue. You know what? It's, it's easier to accept this word on faith than it is to try to figure it out. But people like to argue. And they say, well, what about paradise and what about heaven? Listen, wherever Jesus is, it's going to be heaven or paradise. Can I get an amen? amen. My little mind can't, can't understand that. Heaven is a reward for us, for those who are covered in the blood. For those who accepted the call of the Holy Spirit on their life and said, yes, I need a Savior. We all are going to be related. Miss Lily, I got news for you. I'm going to pick on you for eternity. <laughs> what a place heaven is going to be. We're all going to be related. And see, I, I, here again, I just can't imagine that. So that brings me to number five. Heaven is a place of relief. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said in Romans 8. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, that shows you that Paul was Southern. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. No more crying. Wow. No more suffering. No more dying. No more disabilities. No more hearing aids. No more glasses. How about no more cancer? Amen. How about no more doctors? Yes. How about no more nurses? How about no more hospitals? How about no more nursing homes? How about no more anger? How about no more bitterness? How about no more jealousy? How about, here's a big one, no more pride. Amen. Wouldn't it be great just to think about Jesus all the time and not ever think about yourself? If you'd be honest, we spend most of our time thinking about ourselves. There'll be no more graves. Women, there'll be no more wrinkles. And all the women said, Amen. there'll be no more bellies. Men, Amen. okay, see if y'all listening. Nothing is going to ruin or rot or rust. There'll be no more thirsty, no more hunger, no more begging on the street. There'll be no blindness, no deafness, no diabetes, no more boots we have to wear on our feet, Sue. No more sliding David into an MRI and they had to grease him to get him out. No more of that. Oh my goodness. No heart attacks, no scars, no witchcraft, no drugs, no alcohol, no tobacco, no divorce, no child abduction, no child trafficking, no sin at all. Can I get an amen? amen. Good gracious. I got one left that everybody ought to say amen to this. When we get to heaven, there will be no more bills. Because Jesus said, it is finished. Amen. He paid it all. Amen. No more power bills because Jesus is the light up there. Can you imagine? Amen. No more grocery store bills because they're going to feed us. No more of this and no more of that. We're not going to need a car. We're not going to need this. I can pass through here and through here and here I go. Isn't that great? Think about what heaven is going to be like. Some people call it heaven. John called it New Jerusalem coming down. Some people call it God's city. Some people call it paradise. Can I tell you what I call it? Home. Amen. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going to sit at the table with God. And I'm going to break bread. But how is that going to happen? Because it's so big. And some eggheads sat down and figured up uh, New Jerusalem is 1,500 mile cube. It'll hold 100 billion people. It's big enough, and they all hold on to your seat. This is how great God is. A 1,500 mile cube is big enough to hold every person that has ever lived and will live on this planet because Jesus died for them all. Doesn't mean they're going to be there. But he prepared a place for all of us. So I call it home. And then the last thing I want to read with you, Revelation 21. 
27, the same chapter we read from. Ricky, you don't have this. But there shall by no means enter into heaven anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Heaven is a restricted place. There's walls. There's gates. Why? Because heaven was prepared for those whose name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You go on and you read chapter 21 where I quit at verse 7 and you go on down and he tells you a list of everybody that's not going to be there. And, and you know, Betty, he didn't put at the top of the list the sins that I hate, like abortion and, and gay marriage. He put in there liars. He put in there what we call the little sins. There is no such thing. The only way you're going to get into heaven is to be covered in the blood with your name in that Lamb's book of life. That does not mean you lived a perfect life, but it means when God looks at you, he sees his son Jesus, and here's what he says to you. Enter in thy good and faithful servant. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. See, if you're covered in the blood, when God looks at you, that's what he sees, and that's what he has to say. There's my son. I'm pleased with him. So see, heaven, hold on to your seat, is not going to be a place for good people. Thank you. There will be no good person in heaven. I'm telling you. Also, there's going to be no atheist in hell. Think about it, y'all. Just let that, let that stew, because when they get to hell, they know there is a God. <laughs> but in heaven, there will be no good people. There will be nobody that worked their way in. There'll be nobody that earned their way in. There'll be nobody that bought their way in with influence. There'll be nobody there because they had a connection to God other than through Jesus Christ. There'll be no connection through Muhammad or through Buddha or through all these other people that the world claims are ways to heaven. The only way you're getting into heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's it, plain and simple. And if you get mad, don't get mad at me. Look at what God's Word says. Your name has to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. That's why Jesus went to the cross. He paid that price. So listen, as we here in this planet and we're living our everyday life, it's easy to get discouraged, is it not? Especially the older we get. I got places now that hurt where I used to not have places. That makes sense. <laughs> I used to look at all them old people, them about 40, you, you know, them was old folks, buddy. Well, I'm glad I won't never get there. God has a way of showing us and preparing us for this place called heaven. Mm -hmm. And us with gray hair, we need to be more mindful of heaven and how many people we can take with us, especially your family your kids and your grandkids and the people of influence that you have. You need to be that person that influences them. Amen. They look at you and they say, I, I don't know if this heaven thing is real or not, but Betty believes it. Like Brother Jimmy this morning, that took a lot of courage to stand up Amen. there. I give God the glory for that. Amen. I didn't twist his arm. I encouraged, really, I encouraged him. If he'd have said no, that would have been fine. No hard feelings. But that's giving God the glory. Amen. And, and what if somebody sees him on Facebook, or on, yeah, when Ricky puts it on Facebook that knows him. I can't believe he did that. Wow. What an impact we can have. So heaven was just not prepared for the little church by the road here. There's going to be a lot more folks up there than us. A lot more folks. So what are we doing to proclaim how great heaven is? I, I get these emails all the time about these cruise ships, but it's got all this... All the pictures of the pools and the slides and everybody laughing and having a good time and and all this great stuff, they, 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 are, they are bragging about what it is. We need to be bragging on heaven, y'all. 
We have nothing here to brag about. Let me tell you where God has prepared for me. Amen. I'm going to a place that you cannot imagine. See, I believe they're going to have pigs up there and you eat the ham and, and it grows back. <laughs> Unlimited bacon supply. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Jay and Daddy used to say he was going to have a bass boat 100 foot long and catch bass that weighed 600 pounds. I don't know about any of that, but I'm going to tell you this. I know it's going to be a perfect place. Amen. And I cannot imagine how great it's going to be. I cannot imagine how it'll be that have no time. I don't have to get up in the morning, Dale, and worry about myself, what I'm going to put on, what I'm going to do. I don't have to worry about taking care of everything, doing this and doing that. All I have to do is praise God. Amen. And if you don't like praising God now, you're going to be in a heap of trouble up there. Amen. Now I'm going to close with this. You will not be sitting on a cloud playing a harp, okay? And your mama did not become an angel. I'm sorry. She became something better than an angel. We're going to have stuff to do. It's not going to be a boring place. We're going to have jobs. I don't know what they are. doesn't matter. We're going to have a job. But Isaiah said this, I saw God and I saw him high and lifted up and it changed me. When I walked through those pearly gates, I cannot imagine how great it's going to be. It is wonderful. My granddaddy died shouting. Her daddy died singing, I'm coming home. Her mama died telling us about what she saw in glory. We had a good friend, a young girl, who, who could sing like you wouldn't believe, and she died with her arm reaching up like she was reaching for somebody. Don't tell me God hadn't got a place for us that is prepared for something that we cannot imagine. And listen, y'all, listen. Do not be afraid to die. Amen. When Jesus said, it is finished, death lost. Amen. Oh, grave, listen to this. Where is thy victory? It's gone. Oh, death, where is thy sting? It's gone. Amen. Jesus took it all away. Death for a believer is closing your eyes here and opening them there. That's it. That's it. It can't be that simple. Yes, it is. I don't care what the world says. There is no place called purgatory where you go wait, where you're good enough to get in, because if there was, you'd be waiting there forever, okay? There is no what we call soul sleep where you're in the ground and, 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 and that's it. No. No, when you die, to be absent from the body is to be present with God. Amen. Amen. So that means my body's in the ground, but I'm somewhere else. That ain't, that ain't me. How, do, how, do I, how else can I back that up? Well, when the witch of Endor, Saul used the witch of Endor to call Samuel, Samuel said, leave me alone. I don't want to come back. That's pretty simple, y'all. It is pretty plain in the Word if you get in the Word. When you die, you are either going to heaven or you're going to hell, one or the other, right then. Now, we can stand here and we can talk about Sheol, and we can talk about paradise, and we can talk about heaven, we can talk about hell, we can talk about the lake of fire. Bottom line is this. If you die a believer, you're going to heaven. If you die lost, you're going to hell. End of discussion. Amen. Well, preacher, you make it too simple. I didn't do it. God did it. Right. Amen. I didn't do it. God did it. And I'm going to throw this last thing out and we're through. The disciples, when Jesus was on that cross, they were all scattered except John. John was right there at the cross. In fact, Jesus mentioned him. Jesus told his mother, said, behold your son. He told John, behold your mother. In other words, take care of my mama. That's what he said. The other disciples were scared. I'm sure John was scared too. But after the resurrection, they boldly stood. They were not afraid to die. They, they were tortured, y'all. And they never recanted their story. 
Why? Because you cannot change the truth. Every one of them went to their death, being tortured, beheaded, crucified, pulled apart by horses, except John the Revelator, and none of them changed their story. And listen, you cannot tell me that if it was a lie and they were just doing it to get attention, that when they started tying them horses, they said, whoa, wait a minute, y'all, I'm just kidding here. I'm just, no, it did not happen. So don't tell me that these men gave their lives for something that wasn't true because it was true. And it is true. And more people saw Jesus Christ after he was risen from the dead than we can even imagine. And historians, Josephus, you ought to read the works of Josephus. He was a Jewish historian. There's more proof that Jesus lived and died and rose from the dead than there is physical proof that Julius Caesar ever lived. Now take that to the bank with you. So if Jesus died on that cross and he fulfilled the messianic prophecies all the way back to the book of Psalms, Psalms 22 was a messianic prophecy of Jesus on the cross. Don't tell me that he is not powerful enough to prepare this place called heaven for us. Amen. It ought to make a Baptist shout. Amen. We ought to leave here today with a smile on our face saying, let me tell you what is waiting for me. Well, you're getting old. You're... My sister turned 69 today. She said, I'm at the last days of my life. I said, you don't know that know that and here's what I wish I'd have told her when you die according to John the fifth chapter we go from death to life Amen. we're not living now we are existing now living is in heaven with God because we were prepared for him in his glory I want to ask you to bow your heads right where you are first of all do you know that you're saved that's, that's the most important question. It would be terrible to think that you're saved and to let pride keep you from going to heaven. Stand before God. There's going to be people who stand before God and argue with Him and say, but God, we went and visited the orphans. We gave to the little church by the road every month food for them girls. God, we did this and God, we did that. He said, depart from me, I never knew you. That'd be terrible to think that you're saved. So look at your heart right now. Are you honestly and truly saved? And let me tell you what Satan will tell you. Well, you better be ashamed to go down there. If you, if you don't know for sure you're saved, they're going to laugh at you. No, we will not. We will rejoice. Because the book of John says this, I write this that you may know that you're saved. So are you saved? All right, let's just say you know you're saved. Are you surrendered to God and doing what he's called you to do? Are you being that positive influence or are you being the negative influence? Are you focused on the things of this world and not things above you heard me read a while ago where he says, do not focus on this world. This world is going to pass away. Let me ask you this, and we're going to pray and be dismissed. Do you have the joy of Christ in your soul right now? Have you let the world come in and crowd out that joy? And listen, it's easy. Even the Apostle Paul said that he had some sleepless nights. He, he worried sometimes. He had some sleepless nights. And, and King David did. And I know Elijah did. And I know Daniel did. It's, it's okay to get distracted sometimes. But when was the last time you felt the joy of the Lord? If you're missing that, let today be the day. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray right